Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. This is Adventures with Corey with, well, of course, Corey. <laughs> so now that I've returned from my voyage on board the Serenade of the Seas, I think it's time that I share with you my honest thoughts and review um, of the voyage. But be sure to watch all the way through as I've got a special announcement for you at the end of the video. In my review, I'll cover my take on the ship, the food, the entertainment, the service, and well, of course, the ports. So I had a few firsts on this sailing. It was my first time on board a Royal Caribbean Radiance class ship. It was the smallest ship that I've been on, the oldest ship that I've been on. It was also my first time doing a Northeast or New England and Canadian sailing. Although I have been to Boston and Halifax before, I've actually never been to the ports of Sydney, Bar Harbor, or Portland. So with that said, let's jump right into it. Embarking in Boston was actually one of the quickest experiences that I've ever encountered. Um, upon arriving to the port, I think it probably took less than 10 minutes before we were actually on board the ship. Um, there was no waiting to go through security, no waiting to be quote unquote checked in, uh, even though we had checked in on the app prior to our arrival. So embarking in Boston was an absolute breeze. All right, so as for the ship, so the Serenity of the Seas is an older ship. She's about 20 years uh, old. She's in the Radiance class of ships. And one thing that stood out to me about this particular class of ship is the elevator lobby in the midship section um, of the boat. All the elevators are on the left side, which I thought was kind of odd. However, it did prove for some amazing views of the water, as there was a glass wall from just about deck three all the way to the very top of the ship, giving some amazing views. The theater had very dated seating, although the seats did appear to be very cushy. After a little while, they were actually pretty uncomfortable, unfortunately. The cabins were very clean, however, they were dated. The cabinetry definitely appeared to be worn with some chipping of the wood. Um, the amount of electrical outlets and USB outlets is very limited. In fact, I don't believe there were any USB outlets at all. However, I am told that USB outlets are being installed bedside, um, but this was not the case uh, in my cabin, at least as of yet. So with this being an older ship, the cabin did have a more spacious feeling, however, um, than newer cabins that I've stayed in, which was kind of nice. The TV was a bit small, however, the window was very large. Um, although the window was large, it did make it difficult to look through because it was unfortunately never cleaned from the outside. Understand understandably, it is a challenge to wash the windows in every port, however, this was actually never done during my entire sailing. The shampoo and body wash combo that come in all basic Royal Caribbean cabins is poor at best. And my suggestion is that you bring your own if that is at all a possibility. The rest of the ship was very clean and well maintained and the schooner bar was actually one of the best themed and designed bars that I've seen on any of the Royal Caribbean ships that I've been on. It had a lot of nautical aesthetics and touches throughout including multiple large scale models which I thought were pretty cool. Um, so my final thought about the ship itself, the Radiance class is only one of a few Royal Caribbean classes of ships that actually allow you to access the bow or the helipad section of the ship, which is great for both sailway and during nighttime um, for stargazing. So if you're on a Royal Caribbean Radiance class, Voyager, or Freedom class ship, be sure to check out the helipad or the bow section of the ship. So my overall rating of the ship, I give this three. <laughs> just because many parts, including the cabins, had not been updated and are lacking some technology. Okay, on to the food. So one thing that's consistent when it comes to the food on Royal Caribbean is that it's just, well, meh. The way I like to compare the food quality and presentation is that to the caliber of maybe Outback Steakhouse or Olive Garden or Red Lobster. It's not McDonald's quality and it's not Ruth's Chris quality. It's not even, well, Carabas or Maggiano's if you want to compare it to those. Um, basically a step down from there. It's just, well, okay. Often the food came out to the table just about lukewarm or room temperature, which was disappointing. And the quality of the ingredients you could tell was just not good. The spaghetti bolognese had some sort of acidic or metallic taste, and the escargot, which you should know by now, is one of my favorites, was just meh most nights, while on Celebrity is phenomenal every night. The food in the Windjammer did seem to be a bit better, however. Um, the bacon was always actually nice and crispy, as were the hash browns during breakfast, and always a large variety of options to choose from. Even the pizza was decent in the Windjammer and seemed to be about the same quality as Sorrento's. 
Chop Steakhouse was quite good as it should be, um, being a specialty dining establishment. The food here was hot, tasty, and obviously a better quality. So as an overall opinion of the food, I'm going to give this three ship points. Not bad, not good, just, well, okay. All right, so now on to the entertainment. So this is where Royal Caribbean really excels. The entertainment on this ship was absolutely fantastic. From the production show stage to screen, to the headliner acts, everything was great. Um, if I did have one knock, it would be the production show Vibology, and I'll get to that in just a minute. With the sailing being to the northeast at the end of October, it is a bit cold outside um, to be lounging around, so many of the activities that were housed throughout the ship um, were done throughout the inside, which was good. There was often a trivia competition going on at many times throughout the day. Um, of which we did partake in a few of them. We didn't win, but they were fun and wildly popular. Cruise director Ken was actually lackluster at best and not very energetic. He was certainly no Joff, um, I think that's how you pronounce his name, who was one of the best cruise directors I've encountered on a Royal Caribbean ship. The show staged to screen was absolutely fantastic. Well produced and staged with various scenes and staging changes. This, this show showcased about Five different musicals that later became movies such as um, West Side Story, um, Little Shop of Horror, Chicago, and a few others. The comedian Don Gavin, also known as the godfather of comedy, was quite comedic. Definitely got several laughs from me. Um, although comedy can be very subjective, he did do a really nice job with the material um, with, that most people can actually relate to. The magician Chris Dugdale, I think was his name, was an absolutely amazing sleight of hand magician. Almost everything he showed us I had trouble figuring out how it was done. He definitely got a standing ovation for me as well as many others. We also had a tenor singer, uh, Daryl Williams, I believe was his name. He was very talented, uh, singing a wide variety of songs and was a big crowd pleaser. Lots of energy and an amazing voice. In fact, he's actually a Grammy Award winner, which I thought was pretty cool. The Love and Marriage Show is usually a very entertaining and comedic show. However, this show is made or broken by the couples that are chosen to come on stage, as well as the cruise director. This particular show was a little bit boring for me. It wasn't a snooze fest, but definitely not the, the best love and marriage show that I've seen. All right, so now for Vibology. Apparently I didn't get the memo, but this show was certainly not very popular. Looking around the theater just before the show started, it was much less than half full. Uh, while there were some technical issues during the beginning of the show that caused them to restart it a couple of times, which is not a knock for me. I, li I love live theater and things happen, um, and I don't fault anyone for that. It's the show itself for me that I just didn't really care for. The staging and production of the show seemed a bit off and lackluster at best, and the song choices were not my favorites, and it was just, well, an overall meh show that I wouldn't really recommend to anybody. All right, so as for the entertainment, I'm going to give this four ship points. All right, so now to talk about the service. All right, so everybody I encountered on board this ship were very friendly and outgoing. Even though I had my time dining, um, the hostess always did actually try to seat us in the same waiter section, which I thought was pretty nice because after the first night, they knew exactly what we wanted to drink and uh, often brought that to the table without us having to ask. The washi washi lady in the Windjammer, although her name escapes me, was actually really fun um, and seemed really happy to be there. The only downside of the service would be the room steward that I had. While he did a good job ensuring my bathroom was clean each day and my bed nicely made, it wasn't until the second to the last day that he removed the cups and empty cans and dishes that I had left on the countertop. I'd actually been piling them up in the back corner of the, the countertop just so that he would know that I'm done with them and maybe take them away. Unfortunately, that didn't happen until the second to the last day. My large ocean view window, supposed to be an ocean view window, while a great size, was actually unfortunately never cleaned. I would have thought on the first day it would have been rinsed off or at least once or twice throughout the voyage, but it sadly never was, which made it difficult to see through my ocean view window with all the salt and the remnants of the water drying on the window. So for this service, I'm gonna give this sailing three ship mm. All right, so before I get to the last topic, if you all enjoy this content, please be sure to hit that subscribe button down below with the notification bell on as it really does help the channel out. Also, if you don't mind, hit that like button or the thumbs up. 
below and share it with a friend if you feel like they might get something out of what you're watching. All right, so now finally for the ports. So as previously mentioned, this was my first time doing a cruise to the Northeast and what a gorgeous time of year it is to visit. While the weather can be unpredictable, we were very fortunate to have beautiful weather and mild temperatures for about five of the seven days of our sailing. Sydney was our first port of call and due to the length of the excursion, it left us unfortunately no time to walk around the port area. But what you can't miss is the world's largest fiddle, which is right smack dab in the middle of where the ships dock. While in Sydney, we did take a tour of a portion of the Cabot Trail, the eastern side to be specific. Um, be prepared for a lot of sitting. This was about a seven hour tour on a bus, which stops for about four times or so. Um, at some points along the trail for photo opportunities, about 10 minutes each stop. Halfway through the tour, they do stop at a local restaurant where a buffet style meal was set up for us, where you can sample some of the local fare. While there are some breathtaking points along the Cabot Trail, if you're more of an adventurous type of person that likes to be on the move, this tour is definitely not for you. With that said, this was the better of the two excursions we did on the sailing. Our next port was my old stomping grounds of Halifax, Nova Scotia. While we did do an excursion here and just decided to walk up and down the gorgeous waterfront, there are quite a variety of things to do if you're in this port. Halifax is one of the largest cities on the eastern portion of Canada with a lot of history of which much is tied to the sinking of the Titanic. As the majority of the passengers who were recovered from the sinking were actually brought back to and buried in Halifax. The food in Halifax is also fantastic, especially if you enjoy seafood. There's lots of fresh lobster, fish, and for dessert, the magnificent beaver tail. After our day in Halifax, we steamed towards the port of Bar Harbor, which is a super cute, small, quaint town in Maine. Um, but because the port is actually so small, the ship docks off the coast and tenders passengers back and forth. The tender rides about 15 minutes. Um, while we didn't choose to do an excursion in Bar Harbor, we did end up walking around the port, which has a ton of cute shops and restaurants. However, some were closed due to it being towards the end of the tourism season there. We did basically come to Bar Harbor, well, to eat, not one, but two lunches. Well, we had just to try everything there was. <laughs> the clams, clam chowder, and lobster rolls here were absolutely to die for. Super fresh, huge sized whole belly clams. The clam chowder was some of the best I've ever had. Really large pieces of clam and just overall really good flavor. The clams basically had like a taste of the sea and were just enormous as you can see here. They were perfectly cooked and just overall really, really good. We couldn't stop there so we had to go and find ourselves, well, a lobster roll. This too was the best lobster roll I think I've ever had. And it should have been, well, for the price. The menu says market price, but come to find out they were like $35, but so, so good. The lobster was so fresh and perfectly poached and so simple, but just so good. There was no overpowering flavors. So onto the last port, Portland, Maine. In this port, we actually didn't get a chance to spend any time in Portland as our excursion took us all the way to the town of Crawford Notch, which is actually located in New Hampshire. We boarded a bus for a 90 minute transfer to Crawford Notch, which is where an excursion train was here waiting for us. This was a special day though, as the train was actually led by two vintage um, F80 locomotives, which were apparently only used like twice a year. Um, there were a ton of train spotters here, which followed the train along the journey where they stopped the majority of the grade crossings to get their photo opportunity. Unfortunately, that was the most impressive part of the train journey. Word of the wise, however, if you, do if you do take this train excursion, be sure to sit on the right side of the train, as this is where most of the scenery that you'll see is located. On the train, we were given a box lunch with a sandwich, some chips, and a cookie. This was a scenic train journey, but honestly, there really wasn't much to see. <laughs> I felt like the drive to Crawford Notch was actually a bit more scenic nonetheless. The train journey lasted for about 90 minutes and then the bus took you back to Crawford Notch where you could walk around for about an hour before heading back to the port. While in Crawford Notch, however, I was actually able to go with the tour guide um, and he took me on my own little kind of quote unquote private tour of the roundhouse and the engine house here at the train station, which I thought was kind of cool, especially because I love trains. So as for the ports as a whole, I'm gonna give this one four ship horns. Overall, I think this was a really nice cruise. There were a few negatives, but quite a bit more positives that made this really enjoyable. Would I do this cruise again? Sure. 
Um, would I do it on a Royal Caribbean Radiance class ship? Probably not, just I would like to try something different. So maybe a different cruise line, uh, maybe Celebrity or some other cruise line, for example, just for some variety, or maybe even a different ship with Royal Caribbean. I'd also do different excursions, but that shouldn't be hard as there were plenty of options to pick from on a majority of the ports that we were in. So overall for this sailing as a whole, I would rate this four out of five ship -born. Be sure to stick around and hit that subscribe button down below because right now I'm actually on one of the very first sailings of the Celebrity Ascent. And I'm so excited to check out a brand new ship as I've never had the opportunity to do this before. But as soon as I return, I will be posting an in-depth ship tour along with a new vlog series depicting all there is to see and do aboard the Celebrity Ascent. So that's going to do it for now. I will talk to you all in just a little bit. Have a good one. Bye-bye.